Welcome to the Mini Rock Podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Vinny Rock Podcast. I've been knocking out these motherfucking podcasts, dude, um, because I was busy as hell last week. And uh, why? Because we were filming Throwbacks Comedy. And right now, in the room I have with me, Tim, uh, who is my, who is the line producer, you know, who's a big, big reason why we were able to get this thing off the ground. But we'll talk about that in a second. Let me uh, go over some of these f- sponsors. Um, I want you guys to, don't forget, I forgot for two weeks already in a row, I forgot Willie Peach Chocolate. Willie Peach, have you seen the barbershop, the chocolate bars that I have there? Oh, yeah, dude. So that's Willie Peach Chocolate. He's a veteran. Okay. He makes all, all these chocolates out of his own house. He mm-hmm. actually grows all the ingredients unless he adds something like coffee to it or whatnot. But um, he has from a scale of zero Scoville units, right? Some sweet stuff that the kids can eat all okay. the way up to one called a Moab, which is stupid. I mean, it has like a fucking ghost peppers and shit. You know uh, what I mean? It's like burn your insides. Yeah, burn your fucking... Dude, <laughs> so he sent me one and my wife's like, you're not eating that because I have... I have uh, heartburn for everything and yeah. I said well I just want to taste it she goes no no let me taste it first she puts the tip of her tongue in that motherfucker and loses her shit dude. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like yes that's so awesome so you guys don't forget to check out Willie Peach Chocolate it's fucking amazing uh, we're actually working on some um, a, a salsa coming out here soon yeah we're getting the labels for it done I got all the uh, the, the What's it called? You have to get pH testing and everything else. For salsa? Yeah, for, wow. for, for packaging. Oh, for yeah. packaging reasons. So we had to get all that stuff figured out. But everything is good to go here soon. I think in the, probably the next two months we should have a salsa out that is a smoky flavor. Uh, spiced but smoky. Almost like a... Like a Chipotle. Very similar. Very okay. similar to like a Chipotle. Yeah, but it doesn't have... There's this distinct taste that Chipotle has that this won't. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's good. I think people will love it. I'm a fanatic. I'm gonna have to get some. Do you like it? Oh man! Really? Salsa fanatic. My oh, fuck. fridge half salsa. It's really? Ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous. All right, good. Then I'm gonna we're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to send you some. Um, the other thing is, um, be, Beyond Clothing. Beyond Clothing is another one. So I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Beyond Clothing is a. Have you ever heard of Beyond Clothing? No, I haven't. Have you ever heard of Five Eleven? Um, no, I haven't. Okay, so Five Eleven is like a tactical company that makes okay. tactical clothes. 5.11 makes tactical clothes as well, but also it's not, you don't have your multi-cam pattern. You don't have any kind of military patterns. They actually make, they're an expeditionary clothing system. So more of like an outdoor clothing. Oh, okay. Though you've heard of the company Cool. Cool, yeah. Right? Yeah. Very mm-hmm. similar kind of that. Yeah. Um, um, maybe close to like a North Face, whatnot. But this is a little bit higher end quality, very, very quality, lightweight, all kinds of different from from heavy jackets to lighter jackets to, to outdoors from pants and everything else. And so, really? Super quality company, man. I, I couldn't thank the fact that they even jumped on here as a sponsor for me. But you guys go check them out on uh, Instagram at beyond.clothing. You can see all the pictures I'm talking about. I'm hopefully going to be on there soon once I free up some time for me to go take some marketing pictures for them. Uh, but you guys check out beyondclothing.com as well. That is uh, an awesome company that I'm happy to be a part of. Perseverance Survival. You've seen my Wooby hoodies? Yes, I have. That's who it is. <laughs> Perseverance Survival makes the Wooby hoodies, and uh, those are the dudes right there. Veteran-owned. This guy, you know, started from the bottom. Now he's here pretty much in business. Wow. Learning a lot. Um, he's been investing a lot, and, and he I, right now his company is killing it. They're out of stock all the time because they're just selling like fucking hotcakes. Wow. So obviously you know it's a fucking quality product. You guys go check them out, PerseveranceSurvival.com, Perseverance, Perseverance underscore survival on Instagram, uh, Core Medical Group as well. You know Core Medical Group? I do uh, supplemental testosterone. Yeah. I stopped for a little while because I was trying. we were trying to go through the baby process with Christy. Sure. But I found out I should actually be on it more just doubling up on HCG as another really? hormone. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm like, you know, let me just stop all that shit. Did a blood <laughs> test on my blood. Fucking my testosterone dumped, dude. Wow, man. So we need bigger production in my freaking balls. So now, <laughs> so now I got to add to. Um, but Core Medical has been a really cool company. Um, actually, you should talk to your brother. He should. He should. It, I recommend veterans testing their blood. Yeah. To see what their testosterone levels are because. Um, just long endured time in stress. For some reason, your hormones start to get all fucked up and you're not producing the testosterone that's normal. Really? My testosterone level was down to 120 something, which is not normal. Men, most men in the low end is in the threes, mid range mm-hmm. is fives, high end nines. Okay. 
900 range, dude, I'm running at a 120 something, which is like, I'm pretty much a girl. Uh, you dude. need some health. Right, right. That's <laughs> not good because a lot of things that testosterone helps with, even heart, it helps with the heart as well. Uh, and, and you so, know you need some help there for there's sure. A, yeah, man. exactly, dude. So a lot of cool, crazy things that testosterone is good for and that for some reason my body stopped uh, creating. And that's a lot of veterans who have gone in and tested have found the same thing. So ask your brother to just go get his blood checked. You know yeah. what I mean? He can hit them up. I think they charge a hundred dollars without insurance and you go to a blood clinic here in town, they touch the blood and they'll come back with all the results. Really? Yeah. It's super fucking cool. You guys go check out core medical group. If you guys have problems figuring that out, hit me up. I'll help you out. Uh, another one you can't forget. You never can forget is uh, GMR gold. Do you know I do that? No. GMR Gold. It's a it's a company that. Oh, you know, I did see something on your Instagram. Yeah. You got something shipped to your house. You're going through it. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> what's it called? Yeah. So we had it on my on my podcast, and, and you'll you'll know exactly. I talk about it. GMR Gold is like a subscription based gold company. Yeah. Well, Bouillon yeah. boxes. I, you can pay a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. You'll get that much worth monthly. Okay. So it's been a fun way for me to put money away, <laughs> essentially turning it into gold, I guess, or silver. Yeah. And then the kids all have fun with it, and then I just put it in the safe, dude. And so it was my way of trying to save some money and inadvertently put some money away, but at the same time, um, something cool for the kids. It's you know gold I mean? to your door every month. It's fucking awesome <laughs> every month. So GMR Gold does that. They do it under the under the bullion box. Uh, company, so go check them out, uh, gmrgold.com, and uh, I promise you, you will not be uh, disappointed. Boom, those are those are pretty much. And my company's Lead Singers Whiskey, uh, uh, Warfire Tobacco is is the other one. Which man, all kinds of laws in Utah are changing Warfire Tobacco. I think right now they can't even ship in, can't even send tobacco to Utah via email, like e-commerce. Really. Yeah, I gotta look into that. But I have a yeah, new, like fucking way new. Wow. So these guys are messing me like, how do we get it here now? I'm like, holy fuck. So that means I'm gonna have to actually pay the taxes to to bring it here as a vendor and sell it at the barbershop is what I'm gonna have to do. Which is cool, but you should have it at the barbershop anyway. I know, man, but you know what the taxes are already because Utah, Utah fucking kills you, bro. The 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 taxes on tobacco is so high, it's almost I might as well just give them away. Really? That's pretty much where we're at. And so when it's that, that's the case. It just becomes like, man, this isn't worth it right now. So we have to try to find a way to work around it. Or there's a, you know, the Beehive. What is it called? The Beehive. Is that it? The Cigar Lounge. Oh yeah, yeah. something downtown. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, I'm gonna see if maybe they could pick some up for now until That'd I can, be cool. I can start getting a position where we can cover it here and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. For now, it's just not working it. But either way, I got my boy Tim here. Your last name's Roberry. Roberry. Yep. Roberry, awesome. So, <laughs> so I met Tim while I was on set for um, Brothers in Arms for the Banditos Armory show that we had for the History Channel, and he was working on set with us, and um, he was a huge help there on set. And so, after obviously we got the word that Brothers in Arms isn't going to be continuing, um, started looking for other projects to do, man. And me and Tim have been talking and trying to meet up for so many different times about uh, projects that we have in mind or business plans we want to work on. He's a hustler just as much as I am. So it just kind of made sense to work together and find something that made sense. And, um, I already came up with the idea, like, look, I want to write this fucking comedy and I want to fucking just film this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and originally I said my budget 10 K I'll do it for 10 K <laughs> and then it just turned into like 20 K and then it, uh, it keeps growing. Like if you want to do this, we should actually put some money. In yeah. We it. actually need to put money into it. Cause, cause what we, obviously what we did is what we planned. We yep. plan on producing, um, a very quality episode that we can take to Netflix and not be embarrassed and they would look at it and see that we're serious and know that we have the capabilities here in Salt Lake City to produce the most professional version of a television sitcom possible. Yeah, and honestly, like we were very, very fortunate because a lot of people that came in for under cost or donated time or equipment were all people that are from the industry that had either worked on that History Channel show or other big TV shows. Yeah, yeah, and they were lucky because what happened was it was like the perfect storm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of relationships made through Brothers in Arms and entertainment and television and everything else and through the social media channels of Facebook and Drinking Bros community. Uh, we were able to get a badass team of, of of a crew that was able to to do what we did. In five days, we were able to film a full 22-essentially-minute um, um, episode. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not easy because we also were able to catch the intro, the outro, the freaking we're getting B roll. Like, yeah, we were hustling enough to get in some extra scenes, a lot of extra scenes, some extra, it's just crazy. So 
what we were able to accomplish in one week was only only a testament to the kind of crew that we had. Right. Yeah, and it was cool. And so Tim, and you know, it was crazy learning more about Tim as this process grew, as our meetings grew, starting to see how active you've been in the entertainment space, and not per se just movies, but also in the animation world. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, years ago, I uh, I owned an animation studio, yeah. um, and that studio did uh, a lot of white label work, which is um, animation under a different umbrella's name. So people had hired us and we do animation underneath their name. Yeah. Um, they did work for the hub network, which was uh, Nickelodeon at the time. Nice. Um, and then uh, we started building our own IPs, doing our own cartoons and, and getting that stuff out there. That, that was a blast. Yeah. And in fact, now put, I'm put the mic closer to your face just cause yeah. you have a real soft. Do I need to like eat this? Perfect. Mic? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> that's, where, that's where my sound engineer doesn't yell at me. Oh, okay, cool. Um, no. So we, uh, we started doing our own IPs and after that shut down, I mean, years ago I was doing live action stuff. I did a movie, man, 15 years ago and 15 years ago. And now it's actually coming out this July. It's taken 15 years for this movie to come out. And that was my beginning of entertainment. No way. And yeah. it's now coming out. Now it's coming Where's out. it going to be? Um, it's going to be all, all digital streaming. And I really? actually, I don't know where, what, uh, what place it's going to first. Yeah. It's going through a company called uh, Summer Hill, and Summer Hill did, I mean, they did Evil Dead 2, they yeah. did Hellraiser, they've been around for a minute. So did you sold the rights to them, or you guys... Is so it distribution, yeah. distribution rights to them. Nice. So yeah, it was, it was one of those things where the movie had been out, um, and then just through either bureaucracy or, or whatever happened, happened, yeah. right? and it was dead and buried, so uh, we dug it up, and polished that turd and actually got it out. So it's going to be out this year, which so is you amazing. Filmed it 15 years ago. Is that visually noticeable? Like when you watch, you know, it? it's funny. It, it, it actually, at first it looks like it, it could be a little rough, but yeah. you, you lose that completely. Like when it was you're fucking watching VHS. It. All this well, stuff. It was, it, for real. It was yeah. for real. At the time, the yeah. highest cameras we could do were 720, and no digital streaming will take that now. So we had to upscale it to 1080. How did you do that? Even, we were so, so lucky. Um, the progress of upscaling or, or what? Yeah. So we, as, after we had sold it to, uh, or made this deal with our distributor, yeah. um, we found out that all these people would only take it if it was 1080, right? Yeah. The week that we were told that, Adobe, the software we use for editing and all this stuff, came out with a new software encoder to upscale your video, which Holy before fuck. you'd have to buy these $10,000 hardware encoders and like yeah. all this crazy stuff to make it work. But it was just the perfect timing. And we had that thing upscaled it looks great and uh yeah and now Holy it's coming shit, out <laughs> dude that's wild yeah. man 15 years oh yeah and now it's gonna be i mean the distribution company obviously does a lot of horror films type things right that's their yeah and this thing is like uh, a horror comedy it's it's a road trip road trip comedy yeah. for the most part so which are like, always fun yeah for it's sure fun. that's cool dude that's crazy and then and then you've also done done stuff that you've been emmy nominated correct so that studio did a, a show called the Aquabat Super Show, which yeah. is for the Hub Network, Nickelodeon. Yeah, um, and that was nominated for an Emmy. Crazy, which was and you awesome. worked on and you worked on that one. So that that was a studio. I mean, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an animator. You yeah. know what I mean? But Any your that studio. Stuff. But yeah, the studio. The too studio. many legs at the time. Which is super dope, man. Because it's, it's crazy, man. That I've been telling people like there's there's a lot of production here in Salt Lake, and people don't understand that. And then I just went to an audition the other day at. Uh, John Johnson's do you have you heard of his name? No. Um something Johnson. I just went to an audition locally and I tripped out, man, because I was like, holy fuck, this motherfucker's been here this whole time and I've never heard of it. But um Where's he at? Is he downtown? Dude, or? downtown Salt Lake, right across the street from a park. Watch, I got his name right here. His name is Jeff Johnson. Hmm. Jeff Johnson casting casting is the casting agent for um Yellowstone. Really? For Almost anything it's filmed here for Disney. That's amazing. Yeah. Disney comes here a lot. A lot. A lot. I mean, well, that's what he said. He goes, hey, man, are you interested? I'm like, I'm interested in everything you want to <laughs> throw at me, bro. Because right? he also said he also said something really cool to me that he was like, hey, Taylor Sheridan, I bet he's going to love your look, dude. And I was like, wait a minute. That's one of my favorite writers. I oh, mean, yeah. Kurt Sutter's hands down my favorite writer, favorite what he, whatever he's done to me is huge, right? Mm -hmm. But the newest, hottest guy right now is also... Taylor Sheridan, he's the one who did Sicario. Oh, yeah. 
He's freaking huge. He's, dude. he's blowing up he's right now. He's killing it. And and um I know him and him and Kurt, whatever they, I don't know if they had their differences or whatever the case, but he obviously got killed off Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> and, but, but maybe he needed that so he can kind of expand his horizons. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever the case. But he's a lot of the stuff he does here is in, in Salt Lake. Oh yeah. Well, you know a bunch of the guys that actually worked on the History Channel show worked over on Yellowstone too. Yeah. 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 And so it's like for me, it's like, oh shit, I finally got in the door I needed to for entertainment for me in Salt Lake. So now I don't have to really go search too hard. He's going to see like, Hey, we want you to read for this. Want you to read for that. I just, awesome. I just read for a, for a, for a film, uh, that Mark Wahlberg is the lead. Really? Which is kind of cool. Oh, that would be way cool. Yeah. So I'm really hope I landed that. I, I felt like it was the best audition I've ever done. I walked in there and killed it. I felt <laughs> like it, but I mean, it's up to them. Sure. You know? it's, it's always up. It's so yeah. funny. Like auditions, entertainment in, in general, yeah. it, it's all perspective and you can go in and do amazing but it's just you got to catch that guy at the yeah. right time. And at the same time, I might not have been the look they wanted. Sure. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they probably said, eh, a little too many tattoos. Who knows? But you know what? It's good that you recognize that. So yeah. many people get so downtrodden because they don't get a part of you know they why, don't get though? this. You know why that? It's because that's all they have. Sure. I have more than that. You know what I mean? I have so many other things to keep me busy. If that doesn't pan out, cool. But if it does, cool. Yeah. And if it does, it's actually going to cause more fucking rifts than anything else because I'm like, fuck, now I got to open my schedule for that. You know? But that is not a bad problem right. to well, have, that's, dude. Exactly. And that's what the way I like to have it. Like, right. I don't want to sit here begging for a job because I'm going to take jobs I'm not happy about. Yeah. This is a job. I'm like, yes, I would love that job because I think it would expand my acting horizon. You know what I mean? And no, so, absolutely. And so like when the actors that that need that paycheck that don't have anything else going for them. I feel bad for them, but I understand the game. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when they don't land a part, they get frustrated and, and, and rightfully so. Yeah. Because they need the money, sure. but two, they they're thirsty for that work. And, um, you know, I just kind of stay so busy that if it happens, it happens as much as I want it to happen. It's not going to break my heart too bad. But I mean, you've done right where you're not, you're not pigeonholed. I mean, you don't have to be just an actor. You don't have to be just this. Right, you've that's got what I didn't so do. much going on. That's what I didn't want to do. And I yeah. was lucky enough to, uh, uh, that's why I was lucky enough to to hold on. My buddy just sent me his shit. That's why I was lucky enough to do directing on this one that we did mm -hmm. uh, because um, I wanted to try and have more depth in my, I guess, resume and entertainment. You sure. know what I'm saying? And dude, once people saw saw that I did directing, I got a lot of calls from veterans that are like, "Hey, would you be interested in directing other stuff?" I'm like, "Really? Yeah, dude, it was super dope." I'm like, you know, like how many of those will actually pan out? Who knows? But um, but now it's out there. Well, exactly. and you know what's interesting is like you could see you catch your stride within the second or third day yeah. on set because at first you know that's not easy to get out there, but after well, a couple of days you you really started to command kind yeah. of what was going on. And which it's is hard amazing. to know what your space is really because sure. like I've watched directors do it, but I also didn't want to overstep my bounds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because the DP is going to do his thing. Oh, there's you know a hierarchy. I mean, I mean yeah, there's a, exactly. a definite hierarchy in film. Yeah, I'm trying to text my my sound engineer podcast is trying to text me. I'm like, dude, don't send it here. I'm on a podcast. <laughs> send it to my phone, dude. Jesus. So besides besides uh, throwbacks, which just so you guys are listening right now, it's in post-production. It's getting edited. Um, we're going to be getting, we're, we're working on getting all the music licensing. Did you get those emails right. I sent you? Yeah, I got cool. those other songs. So there's just four, four for now, just mm -hmm. options. Um, and then once we're all done with that, we're gonna I'm going to be in LA most likely filming Mayans MC unless... Something catastrophic happens with my character. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be there on the days off trying to sell our show. Right. Super excited, man, because for me, um, you know, people that probably don't understand why I wanted to do this was because I wanted to be able to work in acting and film and television and directing and all these things, but I wanted to do it home. Yeah. I want to do it where when I'm done filming, I just drive home and I say goodnight to the kids. I eat dinner with them. And so the only way I could do it is take it into my own hands and fucking and, and take the risk man like we, we just jumped in really oh honestly we jumped into that thing so fast i think we started talking about this show in mid-january yeah and then we started filming in march which is insanity stupid, stupid. It's insanity but yeah. we we honestly <laughs> we pulled it off and well yeah very well very yeah well. i'm excited to see how it has come together mm -hmm. you know just even the rough cut just so we have that kind of visually um I don't know, man. So that's why I did that because I didn't want to always be in LA working besides, you know, yeah. And then hopefully we get it sold, man. And then, and then, I mean, we'll have something to work on every time the minds is done. We'll have something to work on while we're home. Right. You know, while I'm home at least. Well, and that's the dream, you know, that's why I did the animation studio here. Yeah. I wanted to work in Utah and that's why my office is here. I want to work in Utah. Yeah. And, you know, I fly around and do stuff when yeah. I have to, but 
man, if I don't have to, why the hell would you? Uh, right, right. Exactly. This is, this, is, this, is, this is home for me too as well. I just actually I just bought a uh, a a, a um, dang it what is it a Utah Jazz jersey. Oh, you did. That's on my wife. Like I'm done with the Lakers. As much as like, look, man, I'm a Laker fan, but like uh, this is home. Why yeah. wouldn't I cheer my own fucking home team on? Right. Like that's it. I told her that's it. If and if we get a if we get a baseball team here, I'll jump on that too because like I got to represent home, man. And the oh, things, there's a little baseball team here. Oh, the. <laughs> I know it's not what the you're The Raptors uh, is hey. actually minor league of the Dodgers. Really? Yeah, it is. So that's why I'm like, okay, cool, right? Yeah. But but the Bees, no. No. And I've watched the Bees games. Um, it's so hot at those games. Oh, I cannot yeah. get comfortable. So I think this this the stadium needs a whole revamping. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, but like, look, man, I'm here in Utah. This is home. I'm a, and I got to start representing it as being home. You know what I mean? And so that's why I was like, fuck it, I'm, I'm gonna buy the jersey. But I'm also I want to work here, man. I don't want to fucking fly out no more. Oh yeah, man. And for you, you have, after this project, obviously we're still working on this, a lot of post stuff we're doing, but you're jumping on to another show that you sold recently, correct? Is that something we can talk about or no? Um, no, I can't say a whole lot about that. I, I can say, so this project was, it's sold into a series, but it's based off a short film that we nice. did last year um, that was, you know, seen by the right people. We had yeah. a bunch of meetings and uh, it was picked up for a uh, 10 episodes of a season, which is that's huge, amazing. Though. And that's going to keep you busy for a little bit of the summer, right? Oh, yeah, this summer. It's definitely going to keep me busy. That's freaking exciting, though, man, because, you know, there's there's a lot of people in this in this industry that looking to try and do something, but I don't think a lot of guys are out there doing it themselves. You know well, what I, mean? I think people fear that risk when you're doing this, because, yeah. like, that short film, we funded it ourselves, yeah. and you go out and you do this. I mean, Anything that you do, and you, you know, you can say this. You've yeah. had all these different companies you're a part of, and that you had to put money in well, sweat. Brothers and, in arms and law. Oh my gosh! Yeah, just the time alone putting into that show was insane. You know, yeah, you know what I did, dude. <laughs> Get this, real. This shit pisses me off. I um, this is this is something I learned from Brothers and Arms. So any of you guys out there just doing entertainment and all that stuff is, I put all my eggs in that basket. Yeah, it was such a cool show to film. Um. There's a lot of shit that you have to you, you have to play around with. Like, I guess there was rooms for give and take, and there's rooms I had to give, and, and other things I had to take. And so, working with like History Channel, trying mm-hmm. to make sure I get the content that I want, right. that I think is enjoyable, that I think is is easy easy to digest, other than other stuff that they wanted me to do because they think, oh, well, I think our our, our viewers will like this. They and think I'm like, they can oh. sell it. Right, and I don't want. There's a lot of shit I didn't want, but as well as like I had to play the game. Right, and so the show itself wasn't 100. percent I'd say it was probably 50 percent of what I would like to have shown. Sure. Uh, the other 50 percent is what I needed to show, so I would be allowed to even air the thing. Right, and so that was the hardest thing. But but in that whole process of two years in the making of this fucking show, I stopped trying to do other projects for film. I stopped. I said, really? why? Yeah, I was like, why would I? I have my show. I have that show and I have the minds. I'm good. I don't need more shit on my plate. And that killed me. Oh, yeah. Because I lost two years in create creativeness, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. In, in potential opportunities for film. I stopped. I should have done other acting things. All these things I kept just denying because I'm like, oh, this is going to hit. This is going to work. And, and oh, we already got a green light. No one's done that, right? Like, not a lot of people get a green lit show. Right. So all these good things that were happening for me, I stopped working on other ideas. You know, Which fucking kills me, dude. That's the thing in this industry is like you you never know what is actually going to hit and what's not. I mean, I have a good buddy of mine and he worked on a, a cartoon that got greenlit for funding all this stuff for two years. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, due to contracts and, and some other stuff, all of a sudden it's gone. Two years of working and it's gone. Never yeah. came out. Never, never went into development like actually. And that was it. Yeah, but he put all of his time, and all of his creative time into this show, and, and and now it's gone. It's like that's the thing that killed me, dude. Like I, I will never do that again. I told right. my wife, like I'll never fucking do that shit again. Because if if throwbacks doesn't work, which I believe it's gonna, I believe you know there's there's too many options out there in the space for it not to be successful. Right. Meaning there's over twenty I can I can probably name um, digital outlets that we can probably get paid to put it on there, which means we can we can pay back the investors who came in and we right. can actually make money creating this show, or at least breaking even enough to fucking keep to actually keep, make it, yeah, right? exactly to make the show. And so, like, I think we we found a concept that was easy enough to do and and it's going to be successful. But it's like 
That doesn't stop me, dude. I have so now I'm I'm trying to raise money to do um some veteran films. I want to do some veteran shorts. Like I want to say shorts, like not even ten minutes. Oh wow! You know, like five minute, um, very emotional artsy pieces that that talk about veteran suicide. You know what I mean? Okay. And so that's my next thing is I'm already working on that process and where I want to go. And I have a theater play I've written that I want. Oh yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, a bit. that one should be really cool. But what I'm trying to get is the Air Force is looking for like anti-suicide um, um, content. Right. And if I can bring in the five right actors for that and hopefully get the budget to let them travel and get paid to do this and do my, you know, and, and play my my script out, I think it'd be fucking cool. And one day hopefully see it grow to some, somewhere else in theater. But it's a powerful message. And I think, you know, anything I do, I want to try and provide some kind of value. You know right. what I mean? Like the, the throwbacks comedy is really is... is Understanding the way my brain works, I, I I have so many more plans than just the comedy. The comedy is really the segue for people to see what we can create, yeah. to open up more doors so that we can create the things we want to create. It's a vessel. Right. It's a vessel for us to move forward 100%. and actually do all these other things that are in the in the works. Right, exactly. Like because as much as the entertainment value of that show should be funny we're also going to hopefully provide a somewhat of a message an underlying message throughout each episode which right. is fun mm -hmm. but that's not going to be the social impact kind of stuff that I want to do because that's it's that's not the vessel for that <laughs> no it's not but it gives you the opportunity right. to do all these other things exactly. I mean that gave us the opportunity to bring veterans on set dude with rally point hollywood probably which was over 51 percent awesome. of the people on set 51 percent were probably veterans or something yeah. like that oh yeah more which half, is absolutely which is incredible mm-hmm like there, you can't tell me there's fucking other sets like that. There's there's <laughs> there's no way there was other sets that have over fifty one percent of them were veterans. Right. That, that's fucking huge, dude. And that's what, like us being able to do that once means we can do it multiple other times. Mm -hmm. And 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 like I said, it's just trying to make that name for ourselves that we're respected enough that people are gonna trust us with more projects. Sure. And that's where I want to get to. Where like, oh hey, we want to see what else you have. Like boom, here's a fucking here's a rolodex of shit I have. I want to tell more stories. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, why can't I be, E-Class said it best. He goes, why can't you be the director that does almost every veteran story? Like, you're the veteran who knows it. And yeah, like, and you can. But yeah. it's just about proving and showing that you can do it on your own right. without other people's help. So yeah. for us to get this thing together and put out and having you as the director for it. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, it's it's a huge showpiece. At the very, very least, it's a huge yeah, showpiece. Least, it, which, which is like, what a shitty... At the least, but that's still... But that's so yeah, amazing, yeah. right? I have a digital resume of like, I did directing, and this is what the outcome of it was. You're right. It's a, it's, a, it's a quality fucking show. Yeah. Which is super cool, man. Holy fuck. It was a crazy, cra crazy time, man. <laughs> so how did you get into animation, though? Like, what did that come you from? You know what? Animation was such a random occurrence for me. I, uh, I worked IT. That's how it started. So yeah. I worked IT for like 10 years. And during that time, I was doing did a, just different projects. I had, uh, I'd made some products and sold it online. I had um, started writing a kid's book. Nice. And so I was going through this process of this kid's book while I was working for a company, and I was just kind of showing coworkers. Yeah. And one day, this guy comes in, and he goes, hey, I, I met a guy that owns an animation studio on the train. Yeah. You should really talk to him about your book. Oh, that's and cool. I, it, which is cool, but it's like, all right, I'm going to go to the owner of an animation studio yeah. and be like, make my thing. You know, and now having owned a studio, yeah. seeing how many people come to you being like, hey, I've got this idea. You're just like, oh, great, not again. But what happened was um, I went to him. Yeah. He liked the idea. We got some investment. And through um, a series of events, um, he and his partner had a falling out. I ended up owning half the studio. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> over the course of yeah. a year, my little project turned into one of our IPs at the studio yeah. that we started building out. Um, that thing was that cartoon we had in front of like, uh, Nickelodeon and Disney it won some events on stage pitching it yeah. at a big summit that happens every year for yeah. kids stuff. That's cool. But yeah, it was just totally happened. You never did anything with that. The kids you book? know what? The kids book came out. Oh. You can still buy it on Amazon. It's called Buy Me, which stands for Bombs in My Eyes. Yeah. About a, a, a rabbit. So, and, so, yeah. so you do have it published. So you did publish a kids book. Yeah. Yeah. So I put that kids book out. It's funny because after that, um, you know, that, that gave me confidence to do other things. I did a comic book yeah. um, with a group of guys that um, some I met through the animation studio um, and others were a friend of mine I've known for almost 15, 20 years it was our main artist on it or one of our main How artists. Did, did any of those do really good? Um, they did okay. But yeah. the, the thing is like, 
Um, I've always been able to create content and create content well, Yeah. but I'm not a, I'm not a marketer. I'm not a social media guy. You know what I mean? It's it's a very different mindset. Like I can, I make pretty pictures and show a pretty message, but, uh, marketing is a whole other jam. So things like I I have a comic book concept I want been wanting to do. I just don't know what the. Like I can work on that motherfucker. I put some money into it, but mm-hmm. they, is it gonna sell? Like I don't. And I put, when I put shit out, I don't really give a fuck if it sells. Like people ask me, like, "How's your book doing?" I'm like I don't fucking know. Yeah, like, I got a check from it. That's cool. You know what I mean? Like, is it helping people? Cool. Is it entertaining people? Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like to put shit out that's entertaining. Really, you know yeah. what I mean? And so. Um, well, I love one of these things to blow up so it pays my fucking bills for life. Hell sure. yeah, dude. Everyone does. <laughs> but like, I'm ready to work on my second book to, to my, to light the fuse. I'm writing mm-hmm. a teen version. Yeah, I saw that. And so that's what I'm working on now is just trying to get fucking, um, a teen version out because why I'm, well, I have a bunch of fucking kids that are going to be going through their teens and two of them are right now. One's a preteen. Oh and yeah. They're going through a lot of fucking life shit. So for me being able to have the social following I do, I, I always want to try and make an impact, and right. I think I've been wanting to talk to schools. I've been wanting to go, like, just be a spokesman at schools as really? well for kids. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, dude, I already speak to veterans. Like, why wouldn't I speak to kids? You know what I mean? Like, right, to me, We it, can it, talk about that. I know a couple people. Again. Oh, that'd yeah, be cool. For sure. And so what I want to do is write this book so then I can, you know, like, offer it to them as well. Like, hey, look, here's this book, fucking... You know what I mean? It's just it's it's my opinions on how I raise my kids, but not even that. Like how you sh- how you can deal with struggle and hardships, and 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 a big big chapter is gonna be on social media and something I deal with my my sixteen year old is right. is not letting them believe that that likes equals validation. You know right. what I mean? And so and so and also it's hard for her being in my shoes where I am posting quite a bit because <laughs> I know what I have here. I have this tool here yeah. that I have to continue to nurture or else. I lose all marketing capabilities for myself. Right. Just like, this is how I've gotten jobs, you know? Oh, yeah. And so knowing the difference between, uh, you know, using it for, for monetary gain or using it for fucking, you know, I don't know, fucking for self-loathing, I don't know, whatever. The well, fuck. so many people do. I mean, yeah. they, they put it out there and it, it's just a huge ego trip, right? That's and, the worst, that, though, bro. It drives the, me nuts. Those are the weirdest people to yeah. me. To me, it's like you're... You're saying here spills all my insecurities. Can you fucking love me? Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck, you sad motherfucker? Don't do that. It, it's <laughs> a very empty, empty thing, bro. And, it's, and it's, scary. it's hard for me to watch because it's the same as the guy who posts every little thing that happens in his relationship. I'm like, right. dog. What like the that's fuck? personal. Dude. You don't have one friend that you can just go text and be like, dog, this just happened. Right. No, instead you had to tell your 400 friends and most <laughs> people have around 400 friends, mm-hmm. right? 400 fucking randos who really don't give a fuck about like, oh, she left me again because of the motherfucker. Take it down, bro. <laughs> Nothing drives me crazier than watching that shit. Oh, dude. Yeah. It's a train wreck of people thinking like, other people actually give two fucks. Right. You know what I mean? Like, But that's kind of the world that, that they're growing into now, is everything is about that validation online, even if that validation doesn't even mean anything. It don't, it, it's it, a way it, for it, them to exactly, measure. It's an empty fucking validation. Yeah. The weirdest shit in the world. Yeah. We're so fucking weird that we we accept empty validation as fucking truth, and like, <gasps> that felt good. And I tell people <laughs> that. So my dad used to work at a 9 dispatcher, bro, and, and there was this lady who used to call him and say, and, and she was crazy. He, a bunch of crazy people would just call sometimes, sure. and they'd be, she'd be like, look, I'm running out of energy. Can you give me more energy? And he'd push some of the buttons, like, beep, 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 beep. She goes, oh, thank you. That's what I need. And she hangs up, right? <laughs> and so everyone knows this crazy fucking lady's going to call, yeah. and you just kind of play the game, because, yeah, sure. You're still there to protect and serve, whatever the fuck, right? Right. And so he just puts his little buttons. That's what I see for people that post shit and just need likes. Yeah. Right? They're like, just give me a little bit more energy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it's so fucking fake and so false. But you know what? In them, they're like, that's what I needed. Yeah, it's so funny. It, like, it fills them up for <laughs> yeah. that moment. It gives them just enough battery energy. Yeah. Like, I am relevant. Yeah. Like, no, you're not, <laughs> dude. You just cross people's feet and people just habitually, habitually just go, boop, like. That's exactly boop, what like. it you know is. What I mean? Like, I like random shit, but I always like people like, you post about your kid, you're gonna catch a like from me, dude. Yeah. You, you post something like motivating that you're motivating yourself, like, oh, I'm at the gym again, try my good man. I'm about, sure. I'm a like, I actually use it for what I believe. Like, I like to. I follow a lot of people. Like, okay. I follow veterans. I follow cops. I follow like uh, you know. Recently, I've been following a lot of like um, 
Forerunner fucking people who have like customized Forerunners because oh, yeah. I, I saw you post something I about wanting to go camping. Yeah, I, I saw w- it. I want to build one. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, I, but I follow people because I'm like, oh, that's really cool to look. But I don't fucking like anybody who posts dumb shit. I will scroll past so fast. Like, yeah, fuck you, weirdo. <laughs> it's so strange to me, man. I'm a, uh, I'm just not. I'm not on social media. In fact, yeah, you're not. During Brothers in Arms, Eli convinced me to get an Instagram page. Yeah, I was and like, I, dude, yeah. I'm, I'm killing it. I've got a whole like 50 people that love me <laughs> <laughs> and they're probably all people that I could just call on my yeah. phone. Right. And I probably just would, but it's so funny to me to not like, I, I've made a point not to be in that world. Yeah. I don't have a Facebook. I don't have any of that stuff Yeah, because of, of all of that type of communication. It just, it, it's not, not that it's not wholesome. That's not the right word for it. It just doesn't feel real. Uh, it's so not much as authentic. It not, that's exactly it's not what as I'm authentic. Trying. It's and, not and, authentic. You know, it's funny. In my world now and how much I use social media, some of those relationships online, like I have friends that are only social media friends because mm-hmm. I've never met them. They live wherever. Some of those relationships have actually been more authentic than some of my actual relationships. Really? Be- because we've been doing this for so long, bro. We've been having social media for so long. What becomes the norm is like the most authentic. And yeah. now sometimes communication through there, like I have guys that motivate me and I motivate them through fucking messaging. And those guys for me are like, that's my boy. And my boy's like, that's not your friend. Like, no, it is though. It, it that is. dude right there always checks on me and says, Hey man, are you working out? And then my own friends are like dis- busy with their lives. So it's a right. different thing now. Oh, it totally is. It's so funny. Cause it, I, you can see the change in, in things from like dating, right? Yeah. All oh, that fuck. is just online, yeah. texting, whatever I apps, did right? Did I, you? I did the whole, th- I did. I, 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 you know why? why? I'm so fucking busy. And it's funny yeah. because that, it's that that's what life has become now is yes. like everybody is either self-imposed busy, yeah. right? Or they actually are busy. Yeah. And then they're using these and there are tools so yeah. you can meet or talk to other people. But it, it's funny that you have this norm of communication yeah. that is so disconnected. It's this disconnected connect that yes. you have with people. Yeah. And it just blows my mind because I'm not, you know, I, I'm not an older guy, but I'm I still like my mind doesn't work in that. Well, world. you're not, you haven't fully committed to the, the social uh, adaptation, no. right? You haven't, you just like, yeah. So for you, that's yeah. not still not normal. Right? No, it's not. It's you like, don't have I'm only missing... online friends. Like I have all my friends, <laughs> yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's like all my friends know that you should just text me or call me and we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. Like, dude, it's, it's, it's so weird though, man. But like, I've met some fucking genuine people that way. And so my wife still doesn't get it. Right. Yeah. She's the same. Everyone, her friends list, she's met in some way, shape, or form. Whether they've gone to elementary, high school, junior high, middle high, worked together, something. Right. Everyone on her friends, besides the famous people out there. Sure. And obviously, they don't communicate. She's just like, oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um I, bro, you know, on mine. It, oh, I know. You get messages from everybody. everyone. And, I, and there's guys like, hey, man, you think you can you grab tacos Tuesday? I'm like, yeah. I'm free. Let's go. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and if I was, you know, I'm like, no. She goes, what the hell's wrong with you? I'm like, <laughs> going to go meet some random dude. Uh, we, we've talked several times on social media. Sure. He seems like a really good dude. <laughs> I follow him and I see he has wife and kids. He's not that crazy. Yeah. Some woman likes him. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so it's funny, but she fucking hates it because she, you know, she's nervous about someone putting harm to me. I, and sure. I'm, it's a thought, but it's, yeah. n- it's not a, a big worry to me. You know what I mean? I do always prepare for that idea. Sure. Like I, you know, but at the same time, I am just such an open and honest person. I understand there's going to be a lot of people that relate to me. Yeah. And so sometimes they just want to talk. And I'm like, fuck yeah, let's talk. I get it, man. It's like there's such a, a two-sided thing where you yeah. have like people are on there. People can be genuine and it's a way to connect. Yeah. But it's so disconnected in my mind because I'm such yeah. like a handshake and look yeah. me in the eye sort of it, guy. Dude, it's I guess throughout the years of me being doing social media and being a kind of a figure in social media... I guess I've desensitized myself to that completely, you know, yeah. and I don't think I'll ever go back. I don't think I can ever go back to it. Like I can genuinely be a friend with someone online forever and say, that's one of my good friends. That's crazy. How weird is that? That's crazy. And that's the first time I've ever said that out loud. So I'm weirding <laughs> myself out by saying that shit. Uh, revelations right here. <laughs> man. When did you like feel like you were finally blowing up or getting to a point in social media where you're like, Oh wow, this is a real thing for me. You know, it's, I used to have my, my Instagram, my Instagram has always grown faster than my Facebook, okay. you know? And so my Instagram is always like my pride and joy because I, I share differently on Instagram. It's so convenient for me to share the way I share. Yeah. And, um, you, you started to learn with, with YouTube 
that people follow that shit and then they want to follow you personally and you're right. like, Oh shit, this is crazy. My following's going up. And then, and then I was in the gym and I used to hit, have a Instagram handle named big poppy official. That was before I just turned everything to Vincent Vargas. Oh, okay. I, like I called myself big poppy to my kids as a joke. Mm -hmm. And then at work we had a, a buddy that was big Papa. It was a big white boy. And then big poppy was me. I got gotcha. So it kind of continued and it was kind of a, a self-given name. I'd give it to like, hey, Big Pop, give it to Big Poppy. I'll eat it. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. so I'd throw that around so often that it became a very comfortable concept. So a lot of people were calling me Big Poppy as friends already. Mm -hmm. And so I put Big Poppy Official on my fucking page. You know what right. I mean? And then I remember being in the gym. It was probably 2014. I was still in the Border Patrol. Um but we've had several, probably five, six different viral videos already with my, with me and my buddies. Oh, okay. And so multi-million million views mm -hmm. and, and growing a business and all, and all of a sudden I'm at the gym. Somebody goes, holy shit, big poppy. And I didn't catch it at first. I was like, that's what people call me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, who else is big yeah, poppy yeah, that's, in here? Else, that's what they call me. I don't see anyone as big as me. And that time I was a lot bigger than I am now. And I was yeah. like, okay. Well. And he goes, hey, well, big poppy, uh, big poppy official, right? I'm like. Uh, yeah, he goes, dude, you mind if I take a picture? I'm like, yeah, bro, for sure. I take a picture and the rest of the workout was gone, bro. I yeah. was in a haze because I was like, that was the fucking weirdest thing yeah, ever, yeah, like bro. The internet like, came into real yeah, life. Yeah, and like, what? He didn't know my real name either, bro. Really? Just knew Big Poppy Official, dog. <laughs> like, it was my Instagram handle was the thing. Oh, that's and, so and, funny. and that's why I was like, I was like, uh, yeah, that's me, Big Poppy Official. What the fuck? <laughs> An Instagram handle? That's what people know me by? Yeah. Bro, and this carried on. So I used to travel a lot, and so I'd go to gyms, and that's where people were starting, like, dude, it's Big Poppy, bro. It's big. <laughs> and I'm like, holy fuck. No one knows my goddamn name. Yeah. This is so fucking weird because no one, dude. And I had that. I think I had Rocco as my name, not even Vince oh, okay. Vargas. So it was Vince, Big Poppy. So they knew me as Vince Vargas, Big Poppy official, Rocco. Yeah. And then so years of this, and I'm like, and it, so much so. So at the time, Instagram would identify who is the biggest name. And, and if you start to put Big Poppy, I would go first because I had the biggest following with that name. Got you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So people were trying to look up David Ortiz, the fucking the 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 baseball player for fucking the the, the Red Sox. Right. And he was retiring. Mm -hmm. People were trying to tag Big Poppy as in thank you for your thank you for all these years. <laughs> They're tagging me, dog. You're like no problem, dude. Yeah, I'm like cool. I'm like what the fuck? Why am I getting all these followers all of a sudden? Yeah. And a bunch of tags with the fucking Boston Red Sox shit. And I'm like holy fuck. I'm not David Ortiz, bro. Yeah. They for some reason because it says Big Poppy official. Thinking I'm him. Wow! Did and you explode at that point? No, dude, no, it just kept growing. It oh, was okay. just like a constant growth. But I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. And so then I was like, you know what? Fuck this, dude. I don't I don't want everyone to know me as Big Poppy Official. <laughs> I I need people to just know who Vincent who, yeah. Vargas is, dude. Sure. And it's funny, Rocco kind of came along, and mm -hmm. still to this day, I have buddies like, dude, it's weird. People call you Rocco. I was like, look, man, I can't get away from it. So. Dude, it was weird for me because that's what I met you as. Yeah, you Rocco. met me, and then you hear everyone just call me Vince. And yeah, like, well, when I first went to uh, the Mayans premiere, yeah. a bunch of the dudes from Throwbacks, the barbershop yeah. were there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know Rocco. And they're just like, who are you talking about? I'm like, that dude right there. And they're like, oh, yeah, Vince. I'm just like, who is Vince? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because Banks Banks knows me as Vince Oh yeah And he goes Dog I can't get used to people Calling you Rocco He's like I'm like bro It's the funniest thing It depends on how you meet me Because mm -hmm. if you don't meet me In entertainment I don't call myself Rocco I right. call myself Vince If you meet me in entertainment I automatically go to Rocco Because I assume you know me By Rocco already Right And so that's how it is for me And so depending on how my friends meet me Dude this guy's gone to the barbershop And been like Oh yeah dude Rocco's a good buddy of mine They're like Oh cool dude Whatever And they give it fade <laughs> yeah. And then my friend's like Dude I don't, they don't even know who you are I'm like no they do you They got, do my name's, my name's Vince bro Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the weirdest thing dude So like when, when shit started getting weird like that I started accepting it But you know I think people People choose how they want to accept that Whether they're going to be like socially comfortable just to, to take pictures. That one shake all their hands, all sure. that stuff. I answer every single email. I shake every hand. I take every mm -hmm. fucking picture. I don't give a shit, right? To me, it's like these guys are, you know, these these supporters are giving me the lifestyle that I have. Yeah, and it'd be, you know, it's it's funny because I've seen a lot of um, people that gain a status yeah. that are so against it's, talking to yeah. people. It's and are like, thing. they're the only reason that you are yeah. where you're at. That's the weirdest thing to me yeah. too. I don't understand it either. And it's And it's funny, it's, there's no gratitude in those people. Right. Right. And that's the thing is like, there's, there's the lack of gratitude and lack of humility. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, motherfucker, this shit can be taken from us in a second. At the same time, you are fortunate enough to be able to live this lifestyle. Oh yeah. Like for somebody just to follow you is a, is a, is a, like a, you have to respect that. Like, hmm, 
my life is interesting enough that during their days of looking for other things to focus on, they like to look at my shit. Right. And there's a lot of people I do that to for myself, right? Sure. There's a ton of people I do that. I just, I go look at other people's lives because I'm like, I got time to just fucking snoop around and see who's interesting. Yeah. And so there's the fact that people follow me. I was like, oh, that's cool. If it's, it's funny. You never want to be so self fucking, I don't know, like you never want to feed that too much, mm -hmm. right? You, it's like this balance, like you don't I, want to let that ego grow yeah, to like, a beast. I enjoy, it can. I definitely enjoy that people like to hear, like read my book. Sure. Fuck. That's cool. Right. And yeah. and so I feel like I, I guess everywhere, all my stuff comes from a real honest place of like, I just like to provide service for others. You know what sure. I mean? And if it's in my experiences, it's cool. And if it's, if it's in my fucking blogs, cool. Or in my even fucking short, short uh, videos, you know, cool. Mm -hmm. And so it feels good to know that people enjoy my mindset on how I like to throw things on paper or on film. Right. right. And so that's cool. Cause it's validation in itself. And, yeah. And, but I don't want to feel like I need that to fucking feel relevant. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a fine line. Cause everybody likes validation. There's nobody that'd oh, be like, everyone. no, I don't want anybody to tell know. me everyone that I didn't. Right. It. But then you get to that point yeah. where you need validation. That's the scary part, right? That's terrifying. I, 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 I need that. It's like my, I need that from my wife. Sometimes I need validation. Hey babe, yeah. I love you. I miss you. You yeah. know, I need validation from my kids to be like, Oh dad, you're a cool dad or you're a fun dad or I love you dad. Like, <laughs> like those yes. little things like, you know, I love those. Those yeah. I hold on to and they, they fucking mean so much for me. And sometimes validation by veterans is important to me knowing like, okay, cool. I'm touching the, the right people, right. like my demographic. But like when you seek validation, so then you create drama to, yeah. to, to generate more validation, you're fucked in your head. What you see a lot. Yes. Well, that's the problem mm -hmm. is every time I post, I sit here, I'm like, Am I posting this genuinely because it's a, and I have to, Yeah, I have, this is my you check to balances, check yourself, bro. Dude. I have to I say, like, am I posting this because I really need these likes or do I really enjoy this fucking picture? You know right. what I mean? Or, you know what I mean? Like the, last night I posted, uh, uh, Christy and Bell doing cheerleading, you know, Christy was a collegiate uh, cheerleader oh, wow. and, and competed all over the United States and, and competed in Florida for many, many years. Yeah. And, and you know, now she's a mom, you mm -hmm. know? And so none of our kids want to do cheerleading as much as Bell has wanted to, and I've always said no, no, no. Right. Sorry, I don't know what the hell's going on outside. <laughs> what was that? A motorcycle? Yeah, I don't know, man. Asshole. But like, Bell and Star asked me at a young age to cheerlead, and I said no because I'm like, ah, nah, you're good. We'll play other sports. And for me, my mindset, and and people will not agree with this. Trust me, my own wife doesn't agree with this shit. But I didn't want my daughters growing up being cheerleaders for other men. Instead, they can be on the field themselves doing it. Gotcha. That's my vision. Okay. I was like, I didn't want them to feel like they had to look a certain way and be a certain weight their whole life to be very vain about their own looks. To be accepted. They have to, to be, be accepted. Right. right. And then also sit there and cheer on the boys. I'm like, why can't you be on that fucking field? Right. I was always in the mindset of trying to raise very independent, strong woman who can be there just with any man. Now knowing there's big difference in fucking biology. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Knowing that. Like, <laughs> like I tell them like, Hey, you'll, the strongest man in the world is always gonna be stronger than the strongest woman. Because biology, testosterone right. alone is a motherfucker, right? Oh, yeah. And they're seeing that now in their age of 13 and 16 wrestling. They're like, it's, it's a huge deal. Yeah, I not, wrestled and I had to wrestle some girls. Yeah. And I was just like, don't make me. Yeah. Because I know we're the same weight, but at this point, I think I was 15 when they first oh, that's, made that's me. A, that's the scariest weight. It's like I went in, but they, you have that thing where like, all right, either I let her beat me. Yeah. And then I'm going to get, you know, yeah. the coach is going to come down on do, me. The yeah, team's going to take it easy and she catches me. Or I wreck her and everyone's like, dude, dick. why did you, dick. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's and, what and I tell I told my daughter like they're gonna come at you and kick your ass and oh, I yeah. expect them to I expect them to because they're a fucking competitive athlete. Sure, they're gonna beat the fuck out of you. You better go in there and beat the fuck out of them back. And if you don't give a hundred percent, that's how you get hurt. Mm -hmm. That's how you get. So you do your best. And if you can't compete with these boys anymore, let's stop competing against boys. Right. Uh, it's fine with me. The fact that you did it is enough for me to be like, oh hell yeah, dude, that's badass. She's willing to do it. So like I've always known that, and so for some reason, like them asking me to cheer, being a single dad of four kids, two girls, I'm like, no. Yeah. We can play baseball. We can play <laughs> wrestling. We, yeah. You know, so that's a that's a scar on them from that's a scar on them from me. My bad. Right. right. And so <laughs> so now they're so scared to ask me for wrestling, and I mean, ask me for cheerleading. I'm like, ah, yeah, you're a good wrestler. You're good. You know. And yeah. so Bell Bell quit softball this year. She was a varsity softball player, not great, but on the team. Right. And she hadn't started. The season hadn't started yet, but she already told me, she was dad, I'm not going to do softball this year. And I was like, 
oh, okay, so you, we're going to do year-round wrestling? What's going on? She goes, no, right. I want to do cheerleading. I was like, right away, I said, You're just like, oh. I said, Mama, did you know this? And she goes, I wasn't getting in the middle of this. Right? <laughs> and so I posted that video. Yeah. And, and it's like the fear of assholes commenting. Sure. Right. But uh, there will always be that. There always be that. As you have people that appreciate and like what you do, yeah. there will always be someone online to tear you down because there's that there's that hint of anonymity, right? Yeah. And people think they can hide behind that. Yeah. And they just say the worst things. Oh, yeah. There it is. Oh, yeah. And so I just block them. You know sure. what I mean? But it's like, why? Right? Why? So that always is a hesitant for why I post. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my, my, my wife, my daughter cheerleading, right? And so... It was the most, it was, they wanted to show me. I said, I'm going to record it because I think this is a cool memory and I want to have it. You know, right. Because it's her first time cheering and my wife obviously competed heavily. Mm-hmm. And so it was, they're having the greatest time right now in their lives together. And it's right. super beautiful for me. Um, because that's not her birth mom, right? So that's why it's even more beautiful to see this connection. Sure. Um, and so I posted it, but I always like, man, I don't ever want to be posting things like this for like to gain attention. I don't need that shit. Right. I don't want it, you know what I mean? And then there's some posts I do want attention for, and not for me personally, but for the subject, sure. right? Throwbacks. Definitely. I want, I want to get some fucking money in the pocket because shit, it's coming out of our pockets most of the mm-hmm. I, just, what, I just put another 3000 into this bitch the other day Yeah. because we're still behind on the fucking thing. So that post, yes, I wanted attention to it, and dude, it got no attention. <laughs> <laughs> it it's get- hard because like people see posts and they see things that are genuine and they want to follow that. But people don't ever want to be sold. And you don't want to sell people. Mm-hmm. But it, it's hard when you need help. Yeah. And you've got these people that have been there showing that they would yeah. support you, right? And then you go out and ask for it. And then it just falls flat. And you're like, oh, what it's, did I do wrong? It, it's a hard place to be in. But, yeah. you know, I mean, you guys listening, I we definitely appreciated the support we got for Throwback Support oh, 100%. Company. We had, we had tons of people just donate money, which is great. We had several investors come in and help us out. Um, and, and we were able to accomplish something I think is forever is going to be, you know, it's that Hail Mary play that people are going to be able to watch the whole thing unravel Yeah, right now on social media. Yeah. And, and that, honestly, like not only because of the project that the throwbacks pilot is, but that is the turning point and the starting point for so many other things. Yeah, I agree. I believe it's going to be, I think people are going to be like, Years down the road, and we're creating awesome films, and people know who our names are because of what we're created. They're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, you know where they started? Yeah. This, is, this is their first film they did." You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's what I would love—that legacy of like hard work, determination, drive, and you know, it's 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 opportunity meets meets uh, preparation. Yeah. Right? You know, what I, mean? I don't think it's luck, right? I think it's opportunity meets, meets preparation. Like you have the skill sets, I had the skill sets. Yeah. We, we we put together an amazing team, and and we've been able to create so far what I think is going to be a successful show. Yeah, no, I agree. And you're right. It is so much preparation will, will determine how everything goes. And for us, like it obviously showed that we were able to do all this extra work because of how much prep we put into it a month and a half beforehand. Yeah. Um, and that's just the same as any sort of production or anything, I yep. mean, business, whatever. Right. Um, that, that does remind me cause we were talking about doing, um, projects and putting things out there. And you're saying that you like to do projects to, um, just kind of get things out there not necessarily for monetary gain, yeah. but just by wanting to put quality things out there. Yeah. I think that's so important because so many people look at it as if I do this, then I will get X amount of whatever. If I do this, yeah. I'll get X amount, but it's, you get such a different quality of something if yeah. you just put it out there to make the best product and that's funny so that's that's a very similar concept of what what, what i see i and i jumped to social media because it's it's part of the conversation already but mm-hmm. some people put out the the rant that is that is controversial right to generate spikes in their revenue absolutely and i refuse to because i'd rather continue to put quality content right yeah. and it's the same idea oh yeah it's I can go put out shit and a ton of shit and eventually, you know, it's going to, it's, it's going to get views. You can raise drama right. and then you'll get both sides coming in and right. you'll get a lot of views and, and a I lot of conversation. And I could also use sex to sell too. Sure. Right. I could use like very provocative, hot, sexy women and try and draw traffic that way as well. Sure. I could, you can do a horror film and all it is is a boom, fi- boom oh chick. Oh my gosh. Chick- <laughs> there, there's so many <laughs> movies the worst, out there. Dude, yeah. The it's ridiculous. But why? Because they knew that was going to try and get viewers, right? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it was an easy, easy way out. Dust Till Dawn's the best one, but, <laughs> 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 but you know what I'm saying? And so like, I refuse to get the cheap thrills, right? I, I, I would rather put in the work to, to at least be proud of the work that's out there because it's out there in the space mm-hmm. forever. Oh, yeah. Be proud of it, dude. And, and, continue to try and put a quality shit out there because your name's on it, you know? Yeah. 
And I don't think a lot of people think like that for some reason because they want the immediate gratification. They do. And, and that's just kind of where we're at is the immediate gratification and then everything runs on the dollar, which, you know what? The dollar is great. It's a tool. Yeah. And that's what it should be is a tool. Yeah, it is a tool. Fucking tool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we're done. Anything you want to plug, please plug it now. If, if there's anything, whether it's a show, whether it's whatever you want, even yeah. if they're interested in hiring you as a production, you can throw an email. You do whatever you want on here. It's your time. Cool, man. So appreciate that. I... I am local Salt Lake City. You know, we do we do productions. I do commercials, TV, film, animation, all that sort of junk. Um, you can reach out to me. My little company is beardbrandinc.com. Um, I do that, and I have a bunch of products. Actually, I just launched a product. You did. A couple weeks ago, um, and it's completely outside of film and production, but um, I do um, a lot of, I guess, weight training, gym, fitness, yeah. that sort of stuff, and we put together a product that's an all natural clay, um, hot and cold pack. It is. So it, it's cool. like, my wife used it actually when she got a concussion, this is what she used to help with her migraines. Right. And so she used it multiple times. She goes, I really like this. I'm like, okay, we're going to have to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, man. I mean, it, it stays hot longer than gel packs yeah. and cold longer. You can freeze it. You can do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. You can be hot or it can be cold. Your mm -hmm. choice on what you want to put on your face. Yeah. And yeah. It, it definitely helps with migraines. Yeah. Thanks man. Yeah. So that's uh that's on uh axterra.com. That's a X. T E R R A dot com and we're selling those on Amazon. It's only been about three weeks, but I mean they're they're going Killing pretty it. well so far. Yeah. Hey, make sure you send me that. You can send me a, a bio and you can also send me the link to that and I'll add it to you the, the so people can click and go directly to buy it. Oh, that'd be awesome. So just write it up however you want, I'll copy paste it in there. Thanks, man. Sounds good? That's great. All right, man. I appreciate having you on here, dude. We're gonna have to do this more often, especially uh film new shit too. Absolutely. Fucking All right, y'all. Take care. I did it. Uh -huh.